G'day, it's Zoe from Zebrafish Digital Media here on the Online Prosperity Show, where we're going to talk about how to do video production for your business, how it's going to save your bottom line, and how you can make it all the way to 2025 on the back of video. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the video producer herself, Zoe. Zoe, how are you doing, my love? I'm doing very well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We were just having a laugh earlier on, and we're just really talking about the importance of video and how online content is becoming one of the most important strategies in helping local businesses get found and actually get to keep their audience. Now, you might be wondering um, who we have in store for you today. Um, Zoe has started a brand called Zebra Digital Media, and she is well-versed in content creation um, within the local region that she comes from uh, there uh, here in, in Victoria. And she's lived and worked for many um, years in and around video production, and she knows the struggles of how uh, local businesses are searching to be found, uh, especially in the social media space. And she has worked hard to craft her own and other people's online presence uh, with video. And she'll be telling us a little bit later on about the viral video that um, she did for a company um, and um, it helped them, you know, boost their bottom line and their brand awareness. Now, Zoe, I could go on and on about your credibility and what oh, you- Oh, you can, you can keep going, you can keep going. You don't have to stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, tell us a little bit about um, how you got started in the video realm and how you actually got to name your company uh, Zebra Fish. Well, I originally started um, my business when I was in high school. Um, I was 14 years of age. And the reason I started with video was, um, does anyone remember those large like, bricks that you used to have as um, uh, like uh, camcorders? Where they're not the size behind, they were even bigger. And they had like a huge microphone coming out. And it was the home recorder of a day in like the early 90s. And um, I still had that from when, um, I, when I was born. Um, and I ended up using that a lot to record things, to play around in front of it. And I also found that video, um, as YouTube and the internet, but also TV as well, because being dyslexic, it was quite difficult to read and quite to ingest the words that were on a, pa on a page. But if, say for example, if I watched the Magic School Bus or a program like that, I could recite it like that because it was being told to me and it was being shown to me. Um, and since then, I've been able to craft and I've been able to work on um, video production for myself as well as for other businesses as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You just um, reminded me of, you know, lagging around with the video camcorders. <laughs> I really hope we're not going to run out of tape on this video today because I know you're packing um, <laughs> a lot of value. Now, um, Zoe, I mean, mm -hmm. if somebody would look at you and watch this video right now would just say, okay, that's fine. Look at Zoe. Just look at who she is. She's got the personality for video. She's got the charisma and everything else that comes along with it. I'm not that kind of a person. And I think video is not the thing for me. What sort of advice would you give to somebody like that? Well, a lot of people who say that are ones that are afraid. Um, and we're not, and I'm not, not See, I can stuff up too. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying that fear is a bad thing, but there's a reason why people don't, proceed forward with anything. There's a reason why people don't talk to possibly their future partner. There's a reason, because there's that fear of keeping in place, keeping in that comfort zone and keeping in that safety zone. And if you're too afraid to jump out of that um, zone to do anything productive, then you're not going to do it well, especially for the business. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm currently in my co-working space and I have to make sure that I don't lock anyone out of the co-working space. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely well that's that's uh, pretty amazing i mean obviously like you say fear uh becomes you know um a deterrent for people to actually put their word uh and their message out there now in your experience and the people that you've probably worked with especially with uh small businesses um how has video actually changed either their brand awareness of their, um, you know, their business or maybe their bottom line, um, you know, in terms of if they put out video, um, the results that they're getting? A lot of businesses first see it as a bit of a hindrance or a bit of an annoyance really to do video. 
um, people that have the confidence to um, get in front of a camera or get in front of their phone usually find it more of an annoyance of, oh, I have to create video. But for people who are too afraid to get in front of their camera, they see it as a real hump to what they want to accomplish. Because most of the time, for most small businesses, all they want to do is just do what they do best, which, you know, if you're a plumber, you do plumbing. If you're a um, marketing assistant, you do marketing. <laughs> Um, and for most for most people they don't want to get over that hump of actually being seen in video but the reason that it's helpful is because very much like what we're doing now we're communicating and you and um, as I noticed you do as well we're looking down the lens and we're constantly having eye contact with the person on the other side of the screen so they can um, when they decide all right I'm in Geelong I want to do some video production oh I know Zoe I've seen her stuff let's talk or when it comes time to knowing a business personally, or you know the owner personally, you have more of a want and ability to get their services off them or to pay them or to sponsor something of theirs. Absolutely. And thank you so much for bringing that up because um, from, what I, from what you're saying, um, gathering that video actually increases visibility because they say a picture, you know, speaks a thousand words and video would speak maybe 5,000 or something like that. And visibility is maybe key. more like a million, more <laughs> like a million. Come on, bump it up, mate. Bump it up. Absolutely. All right. So half of the time, some people might also say, okay, maybe I've gotten over the, the fright or the, you know, the, the vanity of not being wanting to be in front of um, video and maybe they, um, want to continuously put video out there what sort of equipment would you encourage people to carry along because you did mention that back in the time you know they used to lug around um, you know big uh, cameras and people would just put that as an excuse to say oh i don't have the right equipment to be actually putting video out there and a lot of people do still bring that up as an offense or bring that up as a block as to why they don't want to do video but you have to remember that was over 20 years ago now <laughs> No, 1998, that was 20 years ago now. Yeah. And you have to remember that we have these beautiful like devices in our pockets at all times that have both a microphone and usually two sets of cameras. Or if you're one of the fancy pants iPhone users, like six cameras um, that can be used to film yourself. So essentially what I highly recommend was for business owners who want to get started in video or want to um, you know, see if their audience will like video, is just to do it with their own mobile phone. They can easily do it by setting it up um, on a bookshelf or somewhere high, enough to get the full face, the whole pretty face, because everyone wants to see a pretty face. Um, and as long as you can keep your camera still, you have enough light on your face and you're speaking nice and clearly, you'll pretty much got it down. And all you needed was your phone and a bookshelf or a door or something. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and um you're absolutely right it's become you know the bar to entry within this space has become so low there's actually even cheaper programs like the one that we're doing this video on uh zoom which doesn't even uh need you know um any any sort of payment for you to upload or to record your videos and you can actually have the best sort of quality that um would uh you know help you get visible there. Now, Zoe, earlier on, you did mention that you were learning um, from, you know, uh, the Magic School Bus as part of your um, grow, growing up. Do you think videos um, have, um, you know, an, an, an impact in, in people learning about your brand as well? Um, in regards to um, video now, because we're so saturated with advertising and marketing, um, the way to stand out, especially on social media and also with um, the online and in business, like on your website or on other business websites, using video is going to be quite easy because you can grab people's attention. You can stare at them right in the eye and grab their attention. You can use your hands to um, emote things. And for the 80% of people that don't listen to sound on their mobile phone, you can easily just have captions or subtitles underneath your words so your message is still getting across to people and making it clear and really easy to understand but you've got your side titles underneath so people don't have to actually be listening to your voice to hear your message which happens to a lot of people absolutely absolutely no you know just you know going back to the social media side of things um, there's usually vanity metrics that people uh, look at as in video views. 
I'm listening. I'm just, I'm just making comedic points with you. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, video views and if no video has been shared, people, you know, sort of get disheartened and, um, you know, um, you know, all those things that uh, people might bring across and say, no, video is not actually working for me. Now, sometimes there's um, a length in a video that maybe is recommended. Do you think that is uh, something that people should abide by based on, you know, the constant um, the attention span that people have? Or people should just put out a video that has value and whoever wants to watch it would watch it? It's mainly about value. And it's not about how long your video is. Because if your video is 20 seconds long, but says nothing to, the, to your viewer, gives them no help, doesn't solve their problem, or doesn't do anything for them, then that's a waste of time. But it, there, there is one thing I do recommend, especially for people, is within the first 10, 10 seconds of your video, you make it clear to people why they should watch you or what their call to action is. So say, for example, within the first 10 seconds of this interview, for example, you made it quite clear of who you were, who I was, and why the person should be continuing to watch. So if you can do that in the first 10 seconds of your video, it doesn't matter how long the video is. If you've already hooked them within that first 10 seconds, they have an idea of this is what I should do and this is what um, you should do too. Cool, I'm hooked now, I'm interested. I'm gonna watch the rest of the video, no matter how long it is. Absolutely, absolutely. Because while you were responding to that, I just remembered that sometimes people would sit and watch a two hour movie and still, still, you know, not worry about the length of it and still can stand a five minute video that that has no value in it. So thank you so much for elaborating that. Now your claim to fame in the previous years was a viral video that, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that just <laughs> broke the internet, so to speak. Tell us a little bit about how you achieved that and what the video was all about and how you can actually maybe help um, you know, people that are watching right now to um, gain such a result that you, you got for your client. So the video that you're referring to is, I think it's called um, a lip sense world. I think it's what it's technically called. So there's a um, woman down here who runs um, Yankee Sweetheart. Um, her, um, her name's Lexi and she um, does retro beauty um, makeup and hairstyling. So very much, if anyone who's watching the video right now, you can see that's the way I dress and usually look, because um, I just love her style. But essentially what we did was she started going in, um, she started using lip sense, which I believe is an MLM, I'm not entirely sure, but um, they do lipsticks, skincare, hair care, all those type of things. And to help promote herself and her new um, MLM that she acquired, was uh, we did a viral video of a parody of a Disney song. So um, even though most videos that I do on a regular basis are more call to action, they're more directed, they're more, you know, helping people solve their problem, even though this, even though this particular viral video wasn't exactly solving anyone's problem, it was making them laugh, it was making them engaged, it was making them feel lighthearted. So from there, people would instantly want to go see more of her stuff and then they would see all the other videos that we've created um, over the past year. So people saw all the other music videos, all the other tutorials we worked on, all the other like sketches, all the other things that people can then binge watch and people can continue to watch on. And from there, people bought from her, people signed up to her mailing list, people, you know, took action because they loved what she did and wanted to see more from her, um, from her and slash me. So we did that together and um, that was a very fun viral video. I think it was, we managed to get like over 20 million views within under 24 hours or something like that. And that was absolutely insane. Wow. And that was just on and that was just on Facebook. So that wasn't YouTube. That was just on Facebook. Wow, great stuff! And congratulations on that, because um, I think I would have mentioned and alluded earlier on that uh, gone are the days that people have fifteen uh, minutes of you know fame. It's now fifteen people with sixty seconds of fame these days, based on the fact that everybody can just pinpoint um, you know, a point and shoot with their fo mobile phone and create, um, content out there. So congratulations on that. Now you Thank did you. mention that this video was placed on Facebook and you haven't even counted, um, you know, how it went on, uh, on YouTube. Is there a particular sort of platform that you recommend people to, uh, you know, put their most strengths on if they really want to have, um, you know, mileage on the videos that they're creating out there? 
So specifically for mileage, there are two types of videos out there that you can create. You can call what is called evergreen content, which is video content that you make but is constantly relevant throughout the years. So the stuff that we're talking about now, if someone watches this in 2020, it's still going to make sense. Um, it's not going to feel dated. Um, and then there's what I like to call flash content or spark content where um, very much like the viral video or videos that are around about a certain date or a um, bit of news or something that's very specific to a date, time and place. Um, you can put that on social media and it will fly. It will go places. People will love it. But once that week is passed, once that day is passed, it's going to pretty much fizzle out. But if you put it on YouTube and it's evergreen content, so content that will always be relevant to the viewer, it's going to help, well, YouTube and Google are going to help push people towards your content because you're answering someone's question. You're helping them get to their solving their problem. So if it's on YouTube, you can use SEO, the YouTube the second biggest, second largest search engine in the second, world. Yeah, second largest, advantage. yes, yeah. Facebook, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I like the way that you d differentiate them uh, there because at the end of the day, some people would just think, okay, I'll just stick this on Facebook and then it just gets eaten by the algorithm. But if it st stays on YouTube, then it becomes evergreen and people can always constantly refer to it. So um, that's, that's really uh, good advice there. Now, obviously, sorry, um, people might be interested and intrigued by you personally right now and also what you've been talking about and want to maybe get a hold of you in the future. Maybe the year is 2020 right now and somebody's still scratching their head and trying to figure out, um, how to video and there you are, uh, to help them. What's the best way that people can uh, get a hold of you, Zoe? So the best way to get in contact with me is to either look up Zebrafish Digital Media and Zoe Zebrafish Digital Media, or you can look up my other business, Video Confidence Coach, which I'm wearing the wrong uniform for. But both of those businesses um, work together with video production for local businesses. Um, video Confidence Coach is more of a helping you do it yourself through mobile phones, while Zebrafish, which is what I'm dressed as now, is more professional. We do it for you, but it's a little bit more expensive. But it's definitely worth the effort and the help. If we if we can help you out with that, absolutely. And um, obviously, this video will be there as proof positive that um, you do know your stuff, and, and that uh, people can rely on you to um, you know move their voice out there um, and their branding out there. No, Zuri. I mean, we are coming to a close of the year in twenty. Oh, no, 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 I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> right now, but Christmas is around the corner. <laughs> Christmas no. run the corner. Um, wh where do you see video, um, you know, in the next, say, four or five years? And if people are going to be planning uh, their strategy for, you know, for the long haul, what should they be looking out for, um, you know, especially when it comes to uh, the video platform uh, in their business? Um, one thing I can definitely highly recommend is bingeable content. Even if you're, even if you are a plumber or you're a lawyer or something, or even an accountant, I've had a few clients where people think their industry is boring. The only people who think your industry is boring is you because you're in it day to day. Everyone outside of your business or outside of your industry are interested in what you do on a regular day to day basis. So if you can binge content, which means creating a playlist on YouTube or a series on Facebook or something where people can continue watching your content. They um, will continue to learn more about you and your business and what you're like as a person and therefore they'll trust you more to then when it comes time to actually using your services or buying your products, they know exactly where to go and who to talk to. That's definitely the series or bingeable content is definitely number one. Number two is look out for IGTV, which is um, Instagram's um, answer to YouTube is the best way to put it. Um, so all their videos are all um, vertical, which means um, like, like you hold your phone, it's done vertically. Um, so vertical video is going to become a very sought after medium. And even though most of the videos probably like this one you're watching now is um, landscape, which means it's going horizontally across your screen. Eventually, probably within the next two or three years, vertical videos will make about half the videos that you watch because 80% of people watch it on a mobile phone anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great stuff. So, <clears throat> I mean, I, I like that you've brought up IGTV and it being the answer to uh, what YouTube had been enjoying for all this time. Um, you also did mention that when people are creating a video to have subtitles on there so that people can binge watch uh, on, um, 
on on mobile so obviously what you clearly saying is just keep creating you never know who's gonna stumble onto your content and when they do binge watch they get to know like and trust you and that's how business is done these days essentially it's all about the trust factor and it's all about the like factor and if you can get people's attention first and bring them into your funnel to understand and learn more about you so say for example when um i came across you of course i googled you of course i looked at all your videos and all your stuff and i know what type of person you were before um you know agreeing to you know conduct business with you or agree to go on this interview for example so um you know i, I actually found out who you were as a person before i immediately says said yes compared to all the other times in history when you had a business you had to go purely off what other people said about them or what you know what you could find on god forbid a library or <laughs> something like something like that so <laughs> nowadays it's all about actually putting your best foot forward and saying to people this is who i really am the business i run is ethical it's good and stuff so make you know being able to um attend and actually enjoy people's company on a virtual plane is actually quite helpful for business nowadays absolutely absolutely now zuri i can't thank you enough for the time and the value that you've dropped on this episode here and if you're watching this show right now you can um actually understand that from traditional television when zoe was watching um the magic school bus to commercials um and everything to today's youtube snapchat vimeo and even facebook live it's no secret that video has now become the staple of our everyday life and what um, zoe has also predicted is that it's um, is going to be more so on the mobile front. So if you're going to be creating video, just make sure you've got them in the vertical, um, you know, for vertical or orientation so that your audience can actually pick on and binge on your um, shows and your content so that they get to know you, like you and trust you. Now, Zoe, I can't thank you enough for the time and the effort and also the value you've dropped on this show today. Thank you so much. Thank you again for having me. Absolutely. Whew, great.